Dr. Gyoko Ishigami Doyle is a research data analyst at Health Data Nova Scotia and the Faculty of Medicine's Department of Community Health and Epidemiology at Dalhousie University. Yoko was born and raised in Shizuka, Japan, and moved to Canada, where she com completed her undergraduate studies at the University of Victoria. As a multiple-year Killen Scholarship recipient, Yoko completed her PhD in experimental psychology at Dalhousie. Her graduate research examined both basic and applied cognitive psychology throughout a person's lifespan, examining individual differences in visual attention. Yoko's postdoctoral training first included working at the Department of Psychiatry, where she investigated different ways attention functions change with age and age-related diseases. Her second postdoctoral training was at the Department of Community Health and Epidemiology, where she is analyzing and evaluating population-based data from the Canadian Longitudinal Study on Aging. So welcome, Dr. Yoko Ishigami, and uh, you can begin your talk. Hello, uh, I'm Yoko. Uh, thank you for inviting me to talk about our study today. Um, I'm going to talk about the first part of our study, uh, meaning that the study to be continued. And I'm going to be mainly describing association between assistive device use and some characteristics of Canadian people as well as showing how the CS data look like for these characteristics. I'm hoping that what I'm going to show you today will give some ideas about the CS data for people who are interested in using the CS data, give insights into profiles of assistive device users in Canada, inspire people for future assistive device related studies, or satisfy curiosity for those who are participating in the CSA. As we all know, our population is aging. This figure is from Statistics Canada and shows percentages of seniors in red and children in green for each year since 1951. You may already know that in 2015, for the first time, Canadian adults Age 65 years and older, outnumbered Canadian children age, aged between 0 and 14 years. And the proportion of seniors is expected to continue to increase. As you can see, percentage of seniors steadily increases, while percentage of children shows an opposite pattern. As we age, disabilities increase too, according to the 2012 Canadian Survey on Disability. The mean age of onset of disability is in the early 40s. Um, this figure from Statistics Canada shows prevalence of disability by age group on the x-axis for women in dark blue and men in light blue. You can see a dramatic increase of disabilities with age here. Percentage of disability was about 60%. Okay. 60% for persons aged between 45 and 64 years, and rose to about 42% for persons aged 75 years and older. So the prevalence of disabilities of the latter group more than doubled. In terms of types of disabilities, the prevalence of most types increases with age. This figure is also from 2012 Canadian Survey on Disability, showing prevalence of sensory and physical disabilities by age group on the x-axis for different types of disabilities. Pain-related disabilities, disabilities in mobility, and flexibility show greatest prevalence of prevalence followed by uh, disabilities in hearing, dexterity, and seeing. We see that Canadian population is aging and prevalence of disabilities is increasing. We may expect that prevalence of assist device users is increasing too, but there are not a lot of studies looking at prevalence of device users, especially in Canadian context. The figure is from US study looking at mobility device use. 
By the way, I find that mobility device use is looked at most frequently among assistive devices in literature. And this figure shows percentage of mobility device users in the US increasing sharply with age. There is an increasing recognition that assistive devices support health, healthy aging or independent living. Independent living has both psychological and financial effects on individuals, caregivers, and communities. For individuals, being independent directly affects both work and social life, as well as psychological well-being. Especially social participation was found to be a modifiable determinant of health and successful aging. For caregivers who are also aging, care receivers' independence affect, affect them in a similar way. We also found that depression and life dissatisfaction of caregivers increase with higher time intensity of caregiving. For community for communities by emphasizing on independent living. Support rather than care can be provided. This will involve radical change in policies and both individuals and their caregivers will be affected. So assessing the characteristics of assisted device users is a critical first step for informing future policy decisions as well as design development, so that provision of services and care can be efficient, appropriate, and cost-effective. But as I mentioned earlier, not many studies are looking at assisted device use of Canadian older adults. So the primary objective of the first part of our study uh, is to describe profiles of assisted device users in Canada with regard to social demographic health and social network characteristics. And the secondary, secondary objective is to show distribution of Canadian populations in the CSA for these characteristics. We tested, uh, sorry, we used the data collected at baseline between 2010 and 2015 for a total sample of 51,338 older adults aged between 45 and 85 years. Our data both from CSA tracking and CSA comprehensive. Participants in the CSA tracking were randomly selected from within the 10 Canadian provinces and provided information via telephone interviews. And there are about 21,000 participants there. And participants in the CSA comprehensive were randomly selected from within 25 to 50 kilometers of data collection sites in 11 cities across Canada and provided in-depth information via face-to-face -face interviews at home, as well as physical assessments and biospecimen collection at local data collection sites. And there are about uh, 30,000 participants. From the CSA war, uh, residents in the three territories in some remote regions, in federal First Nations reserves and other First Nations settlements in the provinces. I underline this criteria because this is important to note when we look at rates of assisted vice users across different ethnic groups. I'll show you the distribution of Canadians for different ethnic groups in the CSA shortly. Full-time members of the Canadian Armed Forces, individuals living in institutions. And I, I underline this criteria too because it is more likely that people living in institutions are more likely to be using assistive devices and we may be missing those people. Individuals who are temporary visa holders all had transitional health coverage. 
individuals unable to respond in English or French. I underline this criteria too uh, to note that ethnic groups in the CSA may not be fully represented because of this criteria. And lastly, individuals with cognitive impairment at baseline. Since we're looking at device users for hearing, vision, and mobility, I'm going to explain how device users are defined in our study first. The measurement of assisted device use for hearing was based on binary responses to a question, do you use any aid, specialized equipment, or services for persons who are deaf or hard of hearing, for example, volume control, telephone, uh, volume control telephone, or TV decoder? The response options were yes and no. So participants who answered yes were classified as hearing device users. I thought that some of, some of you may want to know what kind of hearing devices we are talking about. So uh, participants who answered yes uh, were further asked to indicate types of hearing devices they used. I listed these devices in the order from used most frequently to least frequently according to participants' responses. We can see that hearing aids were the most frequently used hearing um, devices of all. The measurement of assist device use for vision was also based on binary responses to the question. Besides glasses or contact lenses, do you see, do you use any aids or specialized equipment for persons who are blind or visually impaired? For example, magnifiers or braille reading materials. The response options were yes and no again. So participants who answered yes were classified as vision device users. And here too, I thought that you, you may want to know what kind of vision devices we are talking about. Participants who answered yes were further asked to indicate types of vision devices they used. I listed these devices in the order from used most frequently to least frequently according to participants' responses. Here, uh, magnifiers were the most frequently used vision devices of all. The measurement of assist devices for mobility was based on the question, during the past 12 months, have you used any of the following assist devices? And there's a list of devices given to participants. And we use device options relevant to mobility from the list read to participants. And the, last, the list of selected devices include cane, walking stick, walker, leg braces or supportive device, wheelchair, and motorized scooter. Just like hearing and vision devices, I ordered them in the order from used most frequently to least frequently. So cane or walking sticks was the most frequently used mobility device of all here. And participants were classified as mobility device users if they responded yes to any of the mobility devices listed here. And we have measures for social demographic health and social network characteristics. We have ethnicity, marital status, education, and total household income for social demographic characteristics. Number of chronic conditions, type of home care, and passive health for health characteristics. And living arrangement, social participation, and social isolation for social network characteristics. The analysis is based on weighted cross tabulations to see empirical relationships between device users and selected characteristics and when appropriate by sex and or age groups. But I'm also showing distribution of Canadian populations in the CSA for 
for the characteristics to appreciate weights of device users. First, I want to show asthmatic Canadian population in the CSA. The figure shows the asthmatic Canadian population for two age groups on the x-axis. On the left, you see people between 45 and 64 years old, the younger group in the CSA. On the right, you see people between 65 and 85 years old, the older group in the CSA. Women are represented in blue and men are represented in green. Here, Canadians in the older group is about the half of Canadians um, in the younger group. There are almost equal number of women and men, even though there are slightly more women than men regardless of the age group. And these patterns are consistent with Statistics Canada 2017 database. Now, I'm going to show you percentages of assist device users in the CSA. The figure on the left shows percentages of hearing device users as a function of age group on the x-axis for women in blue and men in green. The figure in the middle is for vision device users, and the figure on the right is for mobility device users. I'm going to show you how to read a figure by giving an example, just in case. Let's look at women mobility device users in the younger group. About 10% of women in this age group use mobility devices, meaning that about 90% women in the same age group do not use mobility devices, which is not shown here. On the other hand, about 20% of women in the older group use mobility device devices, meaning that about 80% of women in the same age group do not use mobility devices, which is not shown here. Okay, so let's talk about patterns of assist device use we see here. The most obvious pattern you see here is um, that percentage of mobility device users are highest among all, followed by vision and hearing device users. You might recall the figure from the 2012 Canadian survey on disability I showed you earlier. According to that figure, the prevalence of disabilities for mobility was greater than disabilities for vision and hearing. So you can speculate reasons for higher percentages of mobility device users. Secondly, you can see age group differences in device use. There's a clear trend that percentage of device users increase with age regardless of types of devices, hearing, vision, and mobility. But the differences uh, seem to be most dramatic with the hearing device users regardless of sex, like this. There are sex differences in device use too, but patterns of sex differences are different across hearing, vision, and mobility devices. In the younger group, there is not much difference between women and men, regardless of the type of devices. But in the 65 to 85 years old group, Percentages of vision and mobility device users were greater for women in blue than men in green. Sex difference was seen in the hearing device users too, but the direction is opposite. Percentage of hearing device users was greater for men than women in both age groups. It is known that men have more hearing difficulties and again, we could speculate why men use more hearing devices. So we saw how assistive device users were distributed for hearing, vision, and mobility de uh, devices 
for women and men and for different age groups. That was not all. Um, I'm going to show you more figures. So I want to tell you what I'm going to show so that you can distribute your attention accordingly because there will be a lot of information. As I briefly mentioned earlier, I'm going to show you distribution of Canadians for each characteristic as background information on the left side of my slide. On the right side of the slide, this is a more important thing, I'm going to show you percentage of uh, device users for the same characteristic for hearing, vision, and mobility device users from left to right. What I try to do um, is to find common profile of device users across the three types of devices in terms of most frequent and least frequent users. But if I find something different, I will examine that particular device users in more detail. Let's look at ethnicity first. To define ethnicity, we use the question asking the participants their uh, their cultural background. Here's a question asked in the CSA. People living in Canada come from many different cultural and racial backgrounds. Uh, you and the list of cultural background was read to the participants. And then we categorize participants into four ethnic groups, white, Aboriginal, visible minority, and other. Since uh, multiple responses were allowed, those who had multiple backgrounds across these four groups were categorized as others as well. Distribution of Canadians in the CSA by ethnicity and sex is on the left side. As you see, we found that majority in the CSA have white ethnic background, regardless of the sex, and not shown here, but regardless of age groups as well. Perhaps all represented due in part to the exclusion criteria I talked earlier. Percentages of device users by ethnicity are on the right side. For hearing in blue, vision in green, and mobility in yellow. Those who identified as Aboriginal have the highest percentage of hearing and mobility device users, indicated by asterisks. Highest percentage of vision device users is seen in white Canadians. Highest percentage of vision, um, sorry, those who identified visible minority had the lowest percentage of all three types of device users, indicated by dots. And I'm supposed to examine vision device users more in detail here because the profile is different from hearing and mobility device users. But we have to look at this graph data across sex and age groups because there are not a lot of vision device users in Aboriginal and visible minority groups. Now let's see how marital status is associated with device use. We use the CSA question, what is your current marital partner status? So there are five response options to select. We combined responses for divorced and separated for our study. And this distribution of Canadians in the CSA by marital status sex in on the left. Married Canadians represent the majority regardless of sex and not shown here, but regardless of age groups as well. Percentages of device users by marital status are on the right side. Those who identified as widowed had the yeah, highest percentage highest percentage of all device users, while those who identified Mari had the lowest percentage of vision and mobility device users. Lowest percentage of hearing device users is seen in those who are single. 
Note that uh, many Canadians use vision and mobility device uh, least frequently, but percentage of care device users is at least not the lowest. Actually, second highest following the widowed people. Let's see profile of hearing device users in more detail. I'm showing percentages of hearing device users uh, here by sex. I had to collapse the data across the age groups because there are not a lot of hearing device users in the younger age group. We can see that same pattern we saw earlier. There are higher percentages of hearing device users in the widowed group regardless of sex. But again, the second highest is the married people. Relatively high percentages of hearing device users in married group, especially in men, may be something to do with the importance of improving hearing for better communication when you have a partner. Now let's look at educational attainment. We use the CSA question, what is the highest degree certificate or diploma you have obtained? I listed six possible responses for the participants. But we categorize participants uh, into four categories of educational attainment by combining these at some post-secondary degree and these as post-secondary degree. And distribution of Canadians in the CSA by educational attainment and sex is on the left. In the CSA, Canadians with post-secondary degree or some post-secondary degree represent the majority, regardless of sex and Again, not shown here by regardless of age groups. Percentages of device users by educational attainment are on the right side. And here are highest and lowest device users indicated by asterisks and dots. I found it a bit difficult to describe profiles in terms of four levels of educational attainment because uh, profiles are different, different across devices. So um, I tried this. Those who had less than some post-secondary degree had higher percentages of all device users, while those who had more than some post-secondary degree had lower percentage of all device users. So all three devices seem to have similar user profiles. This I categorize people into two groups. This is the last social demographic, demographic characteristic. Total household income was asked in the CSA and there are five response options for the participants. We included unknown in our analysis because there are about 5% of people who either did not give an answer or refused to answer, and we thought that it may not be appropriate to ignore them. Distribution of Canadians in the CSA by income and age group is on the left. Average income is higher for the younger group in blue than older group in green, but the range between $50,000 and $100,000 seems to be the most common range. Percentage of device users by total household income are on the right side. The lowest income group had the highest percentages of vision and mobility device users. The highest percentage of hearing device users is seen in the income unknown group. On the other hand, highest income group had the lowest percentage, lowest percentages of all device users. But the profile is different for the hearing device users, so let's look at them more closely.
Here I'm showing percentage of hearing device users um, by two age groups and sex. In the younger group on the left side, percentages of hearing device users are highest in the lowest income group. In the older group on the right side, still there's high percentage of users in the unknown group, especially for women, that's in blue. But besides that, percentages of hearing device users are highest in the higher income group, regardless of sex. Interestingly, um, profile of hearing device users switched from lower income to higher income groups with age. This got to explain that there are high percentages of hearing device users in the unknown income group in both age groups. Unlike vision and mobility device users, patterns of hearing device users seems to be a bit complicated. So we are moving from social demographic characteristics to health characteristics. The first health characteristic is number of chronic conditions. The participants were asked about long-term uh, conditions, which are expected to last or have already lasted six months or more that have been diagnosed by health professionals. There are a lot of questions asked for the presence of chronic conditions. The participants were asked about the presence of subconditions for each condition listed here. For example, they are asked about osteoarthritis in the knees, in the hips, and in hands. A participant was classified, uh, classified as having osteoarthritis if he or she responded yes to any of these subconditions, so knees, hips, and hands. Following this rule, number of chronic conditions was calculated for each participant, including other, there are 11 conditions. So the maximum number the participant can get is 11, and the minimum number is zero. Distribution of Canadians in the CSA by the number of chronic conditions and age groups is on the left side. The most common number of chronic conditions is higher for the older group in green than the younger group in blue, a pattern we could expect. Percentages of device users by the number of chronic conditions are on the right side. Those who reported to have more than five chronic conditions had the highest numbers, highest percentages of all device users. While those who reported to have no chronic condition had the lowest percentages. You can see that percentages of assist device users non-linearly increase with the number of chronic conditions regardless of the device type. And not shown here, but also regardless of sex and age groups. Although the increase is sharpest with mobility devices. We also looked at two types of home care as one of health characteristics. We categorized home care into four types, informal, formal, both, and none. We used questions for care receiving to identify formal and informal care receive receivers. The question you are looking at uh, is for formal care, asking about home care services the participants have received, excluding assistance from family, friends, or neighbors. The participants who responded to any of activities listed at the end of this slide are considered to have received formal care. This question is for informal care, asking about home care, home care services the participants have received excluding assistance from paid workers or volunteer organizations. 
And just like formal care, participants who responded to any of the activities listed at the end of the slide are considered to have received informal care. Distribution of Canadian in the CSA by types of home care and age groups is on the left side. In the CSA, the majority received no home care regardless of age groups, and not shown here, but regardless of sex as well. Percentages of device users by types of home care are on the right side. Those who reported to have formal care and informal care, so both formal and informal care, had the highest percentage of vision and mobility device users. Highest percentage of hearing device users is seen in the formal care group. Those who reported to receive non-home care had the lowest percentage. Though profile of device users are not identical, one common pattern is that high percentage of assist device use is associated at least with formal home care. It's possible that formal home care is associated with accessibility to device use. Passive health. This is the last health characteristic. The participants were asked to evaluate their health, excellent, very good, good, fair, or poor. So this is a subjective judgment for the participant's health. And distribution of Canadian the CSA by passive health is on the left side. It's good to know that there are a lot of Canadians reporting good health, both women and men, and not shown here, but both younger and older groups. Percentages of device users by passive health are on the right side. Those who reported poor health had the highest percentages of all device users. Well, those who reported excellent health had the lowest percentages. The pattern is very similar um, to what we saw in the number of chronic conditions, including sharp increase of mobility device users as a function of passive health. It looks that subjective for health is associated with higher prevalence of assistive device users, especially mobility devices. Now, we move from health characteristics to social network characteristics. The first one is living arrangement. There's a question about living arrangement in the CSA. How many people, not including yourself, currently live in your household? We define the participant as living alone if their response is zero. Otherwise, they are cat categorized as living with others. Distribution of Canadians in the CSA by living arrangement and sex is on the left side. In the CSA, there are more people living with others, regardless of age groups, and also not shown here, but regardless of sex. Percentages of device users by living arrangement are on the right side. Those who reported living with alone had higher percentages of all device users, while those who reported living with others had lower percentages. Difference between living with others and living alone is dramatic for vision and mobility users, but not a lot for hearing device users. In fact, Percentages of hearing device users are very close for people living with others and alone. 
relatively high percentage of hearing device users, or those who live with others, may be something to do with the importance of improving hearing for better communication. You may recall that I said the same thing for married hearing device users. Now we look at social participation. In the CSA, there is a series of questions about social participation. The participants were asked if they participate in activities listed here in the past 12 months. Response option for the question is at least once a day, once a week, once a month, once a year, or never. We used Gilmore's method to categorize responses to frequent and infrequent social participation. Family or friends based religious, sports, or other recreational activities are done relatively frequently. So, if participants answer that they participate in at least one of these activities at least weekly, it is considered as frequent social participation. Educational, service club, community, or volunteer activities are done less frequently. So, if participants answer that they participate in at least one of these activities at least monthly, it is considered as frequent social participation. Distribution of Canadians by social participation and age groups is on the left side. In the CSA, both in younger and older groups, there are more people with frequent social participation. That is good. And not shown here, both in men and women as well. Percentages of device users by social participation are on the right side. Those who reported infrequent social participation had higher percentages of vision and mobility device users. Interestingly, the frequent social participation group had a higher percentage of hearing device use. Again, hearing device users have different or opposite profile. At least percentages of frequent and infrequent users are very similar. So let's look at them more closely. And here I'm showing percentages of hearing device users by two age groups and sex. There's one observation I want to note here. Percentages of hearing device users are notably higher for those with frequent social participation, especially in the older group. This is still a speculation, but a hearing device may have a protective property with respect to social participation, especially in later life. This is the last characteristic of all in the study. So social participation. The participants were asked how often they felt lonely in the past week. The response options were all of the time, occasionally, some of the time, and really all never. We dichotomized levels of loneliness into two based on these responses. Distribution of Canadians in the CSA by social isolation and age groups is on the left side. There are more people uh, without social isolation regardless of age groups at non and not shown here but also regardless of sex. Percentages of device users by social isolation are on the right side. Those who reported lonely had higher percentages of all device users, while those who reported not lonely had lower percentages of all uh, these users. Again, hearing device users are a bit different. 
percentage of sharing device users are very close for people who are not lonely and people who are lonely. Very different from vision and mobility device users. It is again possible that hearing devices may have a protective property with respect to social isolation. So um, we have been looking at profiles of assistive device users in Canada. Not surprisingly, we saw that the older we become, the more likely we use assistive devices. We saw a consistent pattern that there's higher percentages of mobility device users than vision and hearing device users. It is possible that the greater prevalence of mobility device users may be simply reflecting the greater prevalence of the mobility device users, uh, sorry, mobility disabilities, as well as available funding. We saw some profiles which are common to all three assistive device users, like people with low education and poor health, as well as people who live alone and people who feel lonely. It looks like device use is associated with negative characteristics. But some of the characteristics of device users were unique to specific devices. When it comes to uniqueness, we saw that hearing device users had unique profiles, and vision and mobility device users had more profiles in common. First of all, there was a greater percentage of men using hearing device, devices than women. Men typically have more hearing difficulty than women, so the prevalence of hearing device use may affect prevalence of hearing disability. There are more women who use vision and mobility devices than men. Women typically live longer and accordingly, more women suffer from disabilities relating to aging. This may be reflecting the prevalence of vision and mobility device use. Importantly, we saw that people who get involved with frequent social participation use hearing devices slightly more than people who do not get involved with social participation. So when it comes to social connectedness, hearing device use may have positive property comparing with other assistive devices. We can see that hearing devices are important to improve communication function. Not the key profile, but uh, this could explain why being married is the second important marital profile for hearing device users after being widowed, reflecting their own needs as well as others. Similarly, this may be why people living with others and also people who do not feel lonely had relatively high percentages of hearing device use. The results uh, give an insight into profiles of assistive device users among older adults in Canada, but there are some limitations too. Um, our study is a cross-sectional study and so limited in investigating the dynamic nature of aging and the assistive device use across time. And also, um, we are limited in studying how gender has impact on this relationship. We are aware that there is an interest in distinguishing between sex that is biologically defined and gender that is socially defined. But uh, the participants in the CSA at the baseline were simply asked, um, are you female or male? We, uh, we make the assumption that it is biological sex that is reported here. And, and the issue of representative representativeness with Aboriginal participants was briefly mentioned earlier. Similarly, there is an issue of representativeness with a visible minority participant. So we need to be careful when interpreting the results. The study 
hear us talking today the first part of our study, and the second part will involve determining the use of assistive devices among people whose health needs are unmet. We are also interested in looking at association, this time statistical rather than empirical between social participation and device use. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Yoko. Uh, that was an excellent presentation. Um, but now I'd like to open it up to questions. Uh, as a reminder, muting remains on, but you can enter your questions into the chat box in the bottom right corner of the WebEx window at any time. So Atin says that uh, the sample sizes were too small to conclude much from the breakdowns by race. Do you want to comment on that? And also, she mentions that a summary statistics table of sample included in the study may be helpful. Uh, yes, and about uh, the race, we, uh, we are aware that this is uh, very difficult, even though it's an interesting uh, topic. And then, but uh, concluding, uh, making conclusion is very difficult with uh, such a small um, the sample. So we try to include the uh, the variable, but try try to be careful as much as possible about what to say, and uh, because we we are aware of the uh, limitations. And uh, summary statistics table, yes, I I think this is a good idea. Thank you. Yeah. So that was a question I was thinking as well. Um, you were obviously trying to see if there were cultural differences in the the adaptation or use of assistive devices. Um, and that's a very interesting concept. Maybe cultural differences have to do with your living arrangements or who's giving you home care. Did you think about um, including any kind of personality differences on on the uptake of, of assistive device use? Um, I think this is an interesting concept, uh, uh, personality, and uh, but for now, uh, for this first part, we haven't uh, included that yet, but definitely this is something we can think about for the future uh, step. Yeah, it may have to do with that, that, that big sex differentiation in some of these findings as well. Yes. So we have another question from Ben. Have you done any regression modeling to look at independent predictors? And he also has a second question, uh, were power wheelchair users included in the sample? Hello. Um, in terms of uh, uh, power wheelchair, I think the, uh, the list of uh, options read to the participants uh, that include wheelchair and uh, the scooter. So I think if you so that's uh, when they say yes, so they talk about wheelchair, but it doesn't, the list doesn't say uh, electric wheelchair, so probably we cannot differentiate between uh, yeah. the minor wheelchair, wheelchair or electric wheelchair. And also, we haven't done, uh, in terms of analysis, we haven't really uh, explored the regression yet, so that will be our next uh, study. So I guess the idea would be that um power wheelchairs versus a cane would probably be a, a different group of people. So an interesting idea. Yes, and also, some, uh, that is uh, uh, the question. Uh, it's possible to, to say yes to multiple options. So some people might be using um, the cane as well as wheelchair at some different occasions. So uh, it may be a little bit different to uh, uh, differentiate uh, uh, between the Wheelchair user on one side, and then uh, can user on the other side. Olive Brayton asked, "Was there a reason 85 plus were not included?" Um, because uh, in the TSA, uh, the people it's a maximum age uh, of participants who are included. So I think the oldest person at the baseline uh, for 85 years old. From Annie, presumably the most important determinants of use of assistive devices is the need for such devices. There may also be differences among the social demographic groups in hearing ability, vision, 
and mobility. Do you have plans to adjust for hearing, visual acuity, and mobility, and the device use? So I think you, you kind of tried to get at that with some of your stratification work, but do you have any plans for being more sophisticated about the pre prevalence comparisons in the future? Yes, um, this is something uh, we try to uh, include in our next uh, study. And this is the uh, uh, very simple analysis uh, and clinical relationship between um, assistive device users and characteristics. But in our next study, we want to control for um, different variables, which we think important, including those uh, uh, mentioned here. Certainly. From Ed uh, Gersbert. Was there any attempt made to ascertain whether respondents required an assistive device but did not have access to or possess the required device? So need for care versus use use of assistive device. Um, this may be something relating to our next step. We want to know what kind of people uh, don't have device even though they need. But it may be difficult to, to get the information if they have access or not. We, we, can, we may be able to get, for example, if a key participants are receiving a formal care, and then this might be related to availability. And if they are receiving only informal care, knowledge about availability may, may be missing. Certainly. Uh, and Monica talks about the financial constraints addressed in the study. So um, I don't think we ha you have uh, a question about if financial constraints were a problem with using uh, assistive devices, but you did look at that income. Um, I wonder if uh, this is uh, related uh, the household, total household income is something relevant to uh, Monica's question. And, uh, uh, in general, we uh, we saw that uh, the low-income people have, uh, use more devices, but the, you may notice that devices, especially uh, mobility and vision, are relatively inexpensive, like magnifiers or canes. And then um, when it comes to hearing devices, and especially uh, older people, uh, people who have more uh, resources, uh, financial resources, can use a hearing device. This is something uh, we, we saw. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate your participation in the CLSA webinar series. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, talk about our um, next um, webinar scheduled for next month. But um, we'll stay on the line afterwards if we want to continue the question and answer session. I'd like to remind everyone that CLSA data access request applications are ongoing. The next date deadline for the applications is on June 11th. Uh, please visit our website, the CLSA website, under data access to review available data, to find further information, and to look at the details about the application process. Our next webinar. Uh, is scheduled for next month. We'll be welcoming Dr. Yukiko Asada to discuss understanding inequalities and inequities in health and wellness among older Canadians. So please register soon and join us for next month's webinar. And thank you to everybody for attending today's presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you.